Veterinary labs deal with infectious diseases and are in three groups according to tasks and responsibilities. The first group includes central or national vet labs that assist national veterinary services in diagnosing infectious animal diseases. The second group comprises of labs that produce veterinary diagnostic kits and veterinary vaccines. The third group is composed of veterinary research labs which concentrate on basic research and do not contribute directly to the diagnosis and control of infectious animal diseases. Regional Vet Investigation Lab, RVIL, situated in Nakuru, is categorized in the third group of vet labs that help to diagnose diseases. RVIL was established in 1973 with the mandate to provide livestock disease investigations and give confirmatory livestock disease diagnosis for farmer and vac doctors to control livestock diseases. Dr. Joseph Moshabi, the officer in charge of regional investigation labs in Nakuru, ensures that the lab services serves all farmers with their livestock challenges. Our mandate in providing uh, services to the farming community covers the Nakuru County, Narok County, uh, Baringo, Nyandarua, Laikipia, and the Samburu. So in total, we cover six counties. And as the name also uh, indicates that we are a regional facility, it means that there are other regional facilities countrywide which are strategically located throughout the country to be able to offer the kind of services we offer to our farmers throughout the country. And those facilities are also called regional veterinary investigation laboratories. Uh, there are also six in number. One is located at Kericho. There is another one at Eldoret. Another one is located at Karatina. There is also another one at Garissa. And there is another one in the coast province, or the former coast province, it's called Mariakane. And the mandate that it was given is to provide livestock disease investigations and document them and also provide confirmatory livestock disease uh, diagnosis so that the farmers and also the animal health service providers in the region, they can be able to get that expert opinion, which is science-based, and then they can be able to use it to control livestock diseases more effectively. Uh, laboratory services are very important in management of uh, livestock diseases because a disease normally when it is seen by a farmer or uh, an, a field animal health service provider what they normally see is the clinical signs or the signs which are, are seen when an animal is infected. There are a number of diseases which can manifest similar signs and therefore it becomes a challenge for the farmer or an animal health service provider to be able to conclusively uh, make a decision that this animal is suffering from a particular disease and therefore be able to take the right uh, measure of treating the disease. So in that case, because of the a variety of diseases which will be naturally manifest their signs in a similar way, we encourage livestock farmers and also animal health service providers to collect relevant samples and bring them to the laboratory where we have highly trained personnel and also we are equipped with uh, well uh, advanced equipment so that we can be able to carry out analysis and uh, test those samples and arrive at the actual cause of the disease. And when we pass that information to them, then they are able to take the right decision in managing livestock diseases. Referral labs refers to any lab that does additional analysis or testing a sample or specimen sent from another laboratory. In Kenya, 
There are two referral labs, namely the CKL lab in Kabete and the foot and mouth disease lab in Embakasi. It is here where supervision labs send complicated specimens for further research. Laboratory services are very important in management of uh, livestock diseases because a disease normally, when it is seen by a farmer or uh, a field animal health service provider, what they normally see is the clinical signs or the signs which are, are seen when an animal is infected. There are a number of diseases which can manifest similar signs and therefore it becomes a challenge for the farmer or an animal health service provider to be able to conclusively uh, make a decision that this animal is suffering from a particular disease and therefore be able to take the right uh, measure of treating the disease. So in that case, because of the a variety of diseases which will be naturally manifest their signs in a similar way, we encourage livestock farmers and also animal health service providers to collect relevant samples and bring them to the laboratory where we have highly trained personnel and also we are equipped with uh, well uh, advanced equipment so that we can be able to carry out analysis and uh, test those samples and arrive at the actual cause of the disease. And when we pass that information to them, then they are able to take the right decision in managing lives of diseases. Since the establishment of RVIL, few farmers around Nakuru County have managed to get services from the facility. This has led to low uptake of these services by farmers. With proper sensitization, this facility can be of great help to farmers. The uptake of these services is encouraging, although there are some constraints, but it's encouraging. Uh, the farmers around here and those who are able to uh, submit their problems to us, uh, it is encouraging and therefore they have responded, they have been able to, to, to get our services and uh, it has helped them to improve the, the, their productivity. And uh, in, in, during the course of our interaction, we will be able to, to meet with some farmers and they will tell you uh, for themselves what they have benefited from the facility. To me, to my assessment, the farming community and the animal health service providers, both private and government, those who use the facility, they have found that uh, it has helped them to manage uh, livestock diseases more effectively and uh, conclusively. Dr. Mushabi highlights on the services they offer at RVIL. We do diagnosis of livestock diseases and therefore give the farmers feedback and also the, the, the animal health service providers in the field give them feedback so that they can take the right decision in managing, managing those, diseases, those, those uh, diseases. We also do something what we call surveillance and surveillance in this case is being vigilant of diseases that may occur and sometimes they go down, the occurrence goes down. Most of the services offered at RVIL are performed at affordable charges to the farmer. For instance, for diseases that attack individuals and humans, they conduct a free screening while those that attack animals only are charged at a small fee of 250 shillings to 1,500 shillings. Diseases such as zoonotic and transcounty diseases are diagnosed free at the RVIL. Livestock diseases can be uh, sometimes simpli simplified by classifying them based on some criteria. For example, if a disease affects human beings as well as animals, such a disease, we call them zoonotic diseases, we do not charge them because we call that as a public good. 
And uh, in case a farmer is not able to, 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 to pay for that service, there is a likelihood that the disease can spread and uh, affect uh, the whole population and uh, we don't want to, to go that way. The other way of simplifying diseases is by the potential to spread very quickly. In other words, a disease can spread from, from one animal in a herd to another very quickly, from a herd of animals to another herd very quickly, from even a county to a county, and sometimes from a country to a county, to a country. Such diseases, we call them transboundary diseases. So we also do not charge those diseases. An example of such a disease is foot and mouth disease. Uh, so the diseases that we charge, and uh, we have a minimal amount of, charge, of charges for those diseases, actually it is cost sharing, are the diseases that will affect an individual animal and they don't have the potential to be zoonotic, they also don't have a potential to be transboundary animal disease. And in case a disease has those two potentials of spreading very quickly and also affecting human beings, once we have arrived at a, a, a diagnosis, which is normally free, we are obligated to report to those who needs to know. And the first person who needs to know is the director of veterinary services because he's the veterinary authority and veterinary spokesman in the country. So we call those diseases notifiable diseases. We have to notify him that there is an occurrence of such a disease. And he is also obligated to report even to the neighboring country that we have such a disease. And he is also obligated to report even internationally that we have an occurrence of the disease. That is in line with transparency. Because livestock diseases, once they are of that magnitude, they, we need a concerted effort to be able to control them. And we cannot control them by hiding that we don't have a problem.